All right, uh, Lincoln Arneal, go ahead. Great, thank you. Uh, well, thanks for joining us, Jordan. Uh, I guess first off, I know John Cook has talked a lot about, talked to you about coaching over the years and kind of wanted you to maybe be a part of the program at some point, but what finally aligned to make it happen this time to get you officially on board the staff? Yeah, um, well, I think I, um, I'm i still obviously playing with the national team during the summer. And so uh, obviously now with the new rule of hiring a third assistant, um, there was obviously a little bit more opportunity um, and kind of the ability to do both. And so I originally kind of talked to him about I, I really want to use also this time there uh, to um, want to obviously help the team, um, but then obviously give myself kind of a little bit of a break um, personally. And this just happened to to work out timing wise. And he's been super flexible with me uh, to allow that to happen. So um, I think timing and just kind of where I am in my career as well. Um, obviously, I wanted to get into coaching and very interested in it. So um, yeah, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. When did the negotiations kind of happen? Like, this is a real possibility and this isn't just him joking around saying he wanted you wanted you around the program more. Yeah. Um, well, I, I spoke to him probably a couple of years ago, if I'm being honest, of just like the opportunity of like, if I were to finish after this last Olympics, like what would that look like? And, you know, is that a possibility for me? And, um, and then this year, um, I would say like kind of right after the new year, um, I had reached out and just, Cause I still, yeah, wanted to get into coaching. I, I wasn't sure even with the national team at the time, like if that was of interest. So I just, the conversations kind of started then and um, just led to more of a decision and something of structure as the, as the year went on. Anyone else want to jump in? I think uh, Matt has his hand raised, maybe. Oh, sorry. Oh, yep. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Jordan. Um, I guess for you, just what does it mean to know that you're going to be along um, those sidelines on that Husker bench again? Obviously a different role, and I'm sure that's going to feel a little weird for you as well. Yeah, for sure. It's new territory for me, and I'm just excited to to learn, and uh, obviously great staff. Um, and... Yeah, I was in the gym a little bit kind of towards the end of last season, uh, just um, getting some reps personally, uh, just prepping for overseas. Um, and so I kind of have an idea of how the staff is and things. Um, so, yeah, I'm just really excited to kind of be in that role and, um, yeah, see where I can learn and how I can help in any way. Adam? Hi, Jordan. Adam Kruger with CBS in Omaha. Um you've been so used as a player to taking kind of coaching from coach cook. I mean, how comfortable are you now kind of interjecting your own thoughts? And, and I, if I recall correctly, coach cook in the past has kind of said when you got to Nebraska, you know, there was, there was an adjustment for you as far as personality and whatnot. I mean, any, any adjustment you think you'll have going from, from his player to now his, his assistant? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think with anything, right. Like any new, thing you encounter, right? There's always going to be an adjustment period. Um, I, I feel like I've grown a lot, I hope, since my freshman year in college. I would maybe he might say differently, but um I I think that I have learned obviously going to new clubs and things like that, like kind of really observing first and foremost. So coming in and kind of taking notes uh, on what's happening, not really speaking a lot to start and knowing where I can add value and maybe where things that I should speak on or not. And so just really kind of getting a lay of the land first um, and then really understanding kind of where, first of all, where he sees my role and what he feels I can add because ultimately he's going to have that decision. Um, but then also where maybe I can feel like I can add a little bit more in certain areas. So um, I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like. And I, for sure, I'm just, there's going to be some trial and error as we go uh, with anything, but hopefully there's going to be more growth um, than anything. Jacob? Yeah, so you kind of got put your toes in the water there with a couple of uh, assistant or uh, volunteer assistant coaching stints. How, did that kind of like um, kind of help you decide like, yes, the going into coaching is definitely something that I want to do. Obviously, Midland most recently, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
full-time role. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. Um, I, I think also too, as I've evolved as a player and, and learned that I think just more as a leader, I, I led a lot more by example early on in my career, but I think as I've gotten older, my voice um, has, I wouldn't say I speak a lot still, but I feel like what I've learned how to speak is more efficient. And so I think with that, uh, I've been surrounded by a ton of great coaches. I feel like I've taken in a ton of knowledge of what they've shared with me and kind of how can I be authentic to who I am? Um, and share information as efficient as I can. Um, but understanding that every athlete's different and I'm also different in how I wanted to be coached. So I think it's just more or less getting to know the athlete and kind of what and how you can help them best. And I just, I find that so fascinating. Like how, how can you get the most out of them and how um, one of the greatest co coaches that I ever got to meet, Mark Dumphy, he always said like, how do you, how do you make them feel bulletproof? And so it's, how can you get them to a point where they can go out there and play free and just ball out. So I'm I'm excited to kind of really like flex that muscle and continue to learn how to bring out the most in, in athletes. Right. Yeah, John, what are the folks that I've been in Nebraska? I've been in Nebraska for the most extensive time for a long time. And uh, what else is good about being back in Nebraska? I'm sorry, you're kind of breaking up. Could you repeat that? Uh, what about being back in Nebraska last fall? Uh, say, what was I doing back in Nebraska? What felt good about being in Nebraska last fall? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, nice. yeah, it was, uh, just, it was just really good to be home. I mean, I think I've been playing now overseas for 15 years and, you know, home was maybe once or twice a year for a weekend here or there. So kind of feeling like I, you know, a lot of people's lives have changed since I've been back and, uh, kind of getting caught up with family and friends and kind of getting somewhat of a routine. Um, you know, home has been everywhere for me, California, you know, like, and I'm kind of in short stints. So um, just being back and and really getting, again, the lay of the land and a lot's changed, but in a good way. And obviously even the university has changed so much since I was in school. So just learning and adapting uh, was really good. Abby? How have your experiences playing around the world at the highest level in learning from so many coaches, how has, has that helped you and how is that going to help you as a coach? Yeah. Um, I think that, like you said, I've been surrounded by a lot of great coaches and a lot of things that I feel like I've even taken as, as a player and, a, and a, um, have adapted myself. But I also think sticking to also the playing side, because I'm going to keep playing. Like, I think people that have been exposed to coaching said it's actually made you a better player. There's more awareness around like how you're acting and how your actions are being perceived and then also how you're communicating among teammates. So I'm excited to see kind of how that also transitions. But I think there's been like little nuggets that I've that I've found over the years that I've taken. Um, but ultimately, I still have to find like my own identity as well. And I think I do have still mine, but taking kind of a lot of great information along the way, but and not not having arriving, right? I think there's always, the game is always evolving. Coaching is always evolving. So just knowing that um, I, I still have a lot to learn and will continue to learn, so. Amy? Hey, yeah, I've got a couple. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but have uh, you and John and the rest of the coaching staff kind of talked about your role and what that'll look like yet? Um, not, not really. No, we haven't had much time. Obviously I've been in and out kind of I'm out in California currently. So, um, just there's been a little clarity, but nothing like uh, in, in writing. And again, I think there's going to be an ebb and flow and, and I obviously too have stuff to learn. So just, I hope they give me some grace and understanding, which I know they will, but, um, just know that I can, uh, help wherever I, they feel is best. And, um, yeah, I'm just excited to do that. Obviously, you haven't been a part of the, this particular team yet, and you weren't in Brazil with them, but what are some of your early thoughts on what you've seen from them thus far in terms of like what's been out there, I guess, with box scores and some video and stuff? Yeah, for sure. Uh, great. A lot of t young talent, which is awesome. And I think uh, just speaking with the coaching staff, just really they're they love to compete and they love to get after it and which is a great sign and uh obviously we, we don't have any seniors so that's going to be not only great for this year but the years to come and um i i see i think i see learning you know happening you know they want to get better which i think um is a great um 
great asset to any team. And then one last very short question. When will you uh, get back to Nebraska? Yeah, so um, I'm hoping to make the Olympic qualification team, which ends, I think, September 25th. So I will be joining the team after that. Uh, I'll go Lincoln, then Matt, and then Adam. Uh, just to kind of build off that last question, maybe what I mean, what does the next few months look for you? Are you you got the volleyball nations league going on that olympic qualifier what is the next month i mean and how much film are you gonna be watching of the current players in nebraska what does the next few months look like for you yeah so i i've already been watching film as they've been in brazil and trying to help where i can and um talking to i'm working mainly with the pin hitters i guess there was a little clarity around that i'm working with mainly the outsides um and so just kind of changing little things here and there but obviously they're already great athletes already right so um but for me personally i've um, was having some quad tendon issues when I came back from Italy. So I just, uh, had a knee injection. So I'm kind of just ramping up slowly, um, hopefully to join possibly the team, at the end of VNL here. Um, it just kind of depends on my progression and then obviously what Karch wants and things like that. Um, and then we have a couple weeks off and then, uh, we'll gear up for Olympic qualification. So, which is in Poland this year. Uh, so we'll head there, hopefully. Um, and I just hope to make the roster. So because I've been out for a year now, so it just you never know. <laughs> what what about the college? Because you also helped out with Elkhorn North last fall during the state tournament. You worked with Midland. You've been around the professional game. What about college coaching attracted you to that level? Yeah. Um, again, I'm so grateful. Huge shout out to the Wolves and Midland and all. I mean, I it was, it was a great opportunity to work with them. Uh and just, yeah, really grateful. Uh, but yeah, I think I just, I always, I, I want to see kind of what the highest level is doing right now in the States. And I also think now with all these professional leagues that are coming up, like how, how can I help them navigate that space as well? Right. I, I think having, I know for me, I wish there was more information about what pro leagues look like. And I feel like I can also help in that area. Like, Hey, if you have questions about a certain league or what coach, is going where or I, I can have those conversations and make it very real for them um so i i think that's also why i wanted to work at this level and then last one uh, i mean you go back a decade or so ago i mean telling player jordan that she's now coaching at nebraska what would you think player jordan's reaction would be oh man that's a good question uh just i think stoked for her i think put in put in a lot of work i i would say i think john would probably say it i was kind of i don't know probably immature. I, he probably has another word from it my freshman year, but um, as we all are sometimes, right? Freshman in college. Uh, but I think that uh, I've come a long way since college and I, I've tried to make a lot of changes and, you know, learn and grow and and now to give back to a place that really has meant so much to me. Uh, it's, it's really come full circle. It's really cool. Matt? Jordan, have you quite figured out yet how you're going to balance both coaching and I guess continuing to train? Yeah. Um, so I, uh, like with the, with video nowadays, like volumetrics, like it really, you can do wonders. You can screen share, you can, you know, FaceTime. And I think also to like my side of it, where I think I can add maybe more value uh, or yeah, is more like mindset stuff. Uh, I feel like understanding, like talking about tactics, even now, like in the off season, like how, how are they going to put in the work now? Like even culturally, like working like on T9, T9 dynamics and having those conversations now, um, because it, if you put in the work now, it pays off in the fall. So I think it's just more about like having those conversations, building those relationships because, and then again, I've, I've been watching video now with them in Brazil and making, you know, here, Tweak, uh, tweaks here and there on certain things but but again like they I think about even where the game has evolved since I played and now what there are in college like I mean the the margins are already thin but like now we're just making like little changes here and there so um, for me it's more about mindset and tactics and how uh, we can be really aggressive and go out to win and not play to lose kind of thing. Just one more for you. Is there any player on the current roster that kind of reminds you of yourself a little bit and of your style of play? Yeah, I, you know, I think this question gets tricky um, because I think every player is unique, right? Um, and so I, I wouldn't say there's, I, I know uh, John mentioned Harper, which I think she's very fluid, very fluid athlete. Um, I think 
I always encouraged. And I think even for me, when I was growing up, I think you, it's, it's dangerous when you start comparing, uh, any athletes, right. In any capacity. Um, and so I, I just encourage them to be true to them and true to the, who they are and know that my path, while it's been great, is going to look very different for other people and how they get there and choose to get there is going to look very different. So sticking to the process and sticking to their process, knowing that the end goal is to be where they want to be. Um, but my route is probably going to look different from them, but they may end up even, and I hope that they're better than me and, and are, have a better career than me. So I think that, um, yeah, I just, I, the comparison game gets a little tough for me. Adam. Jordan, I know you won't be here for it, but, but what do you think about the, the volleyball match in Memorial Stadium, what, what that'll bring to, to women's sports? And, and also with that spotlight, you know, and playing at Nebraska for volleyball, there's so much pressure. And, and with the focus on mental health these days, I mean, I know there's, there's sports psychologists, but, but what would you say to the, the players who maybe feel like there's kind of the weight of the world on them these days and playing volleyball? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's a great point. Uh, I mean, it's, it's being heard around the world, you know, like in Italy, like people are, you know, that came out and they're like, what's happening, you know, and obviously um, other places in the world, like in Poland, for sure, they also have a huge following and they've had almost that same capacity. And um, it's, it's really an honor that it's going to be happening in Nebraska and what a cool moment um, in history for sure. And I, like you said, I, I think that um, I think with social media and everything, and uh, obviously all those fans like watching, um, I think it's how can you switch in your mind is like, it's a privilege every day to show up and get to do what you love. And, and also, um, and you get a, you get to represent something bigger than you and keeping that at the focus um, will hopefully take the attention off you and, and the stress of the situation. Um, but it can be daunting. Um, but I think it's just acknowledging kind of where those feelings are at and how you are feeling in the moment. And it's okay. It's okay to have fear. It's okay to have all those insecurities, right. And, and just acknowledging that, but how can you not sit in it and move through the emotion versus um, letting it take over yourself? Brent, and then if anyone else has a question, please let me know soon. Thanks. To uh, to be ready for the Olympics uh, in 2024, will you need to play professionally next winter? Uh, yes. Sorry, I, I the plan is to probably go play somewhere in the spring. Um, I have a couple options, uh, possibly. So just kind of keeping the door open. And again, John has been very open, and and I I have been able to you know, hopefully help remotely, um, in some capacity. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Would that be overseas or in the U S? Uh, I'm, I'm really, I am very undecided right now. There are a couple of opportunities here in the States. Um, one, including the one in Omaha, the team in Omaha. Uh, so I just really just trying to stay patient. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be where my feet are and living for today. <laughs> oh, uh, how do you view recruiting as a college coach and what can, what do you think you can eventually when add there eventually when you're when you're full time into it? Yeah, uh, gosh, it's it's really tough right now, obviously, with the transfer portal and everything. Um, I think it's just ultimately keeping the athlete um, at the athlete's best interest at heart. Right. Like, obviously, I, I think they have to do what they are going to do in the end and just encouraging them that uh, this is a place that they want to play and why and, and give them reasons why um, but ultimately the choice is theirs and just giving them the power to do what's best for them um, and not added pressure because they're already under a ton of pressure and I know what it was like and what it feels like and so um, just um, just ex trying to express what a special place Nebraska is and also for me like it really set me up with so much success playing in front of large crowds like dealing like with you know game time uh, high intensity moments, like it really puts, puts things in, things in perspective for you. So it's a great place to play, but ultimately like they are going to have to do what's best for them and just keep encouraging them and, and being there for them in a very, you know, difficult time in their life. Eddie. I just got one Jordan. Uh, thanks for taking some time again today. Um, you talked about building relationships, uh, uh, you saw Lindsey Krause tweeted at you. It's an honor to be able to, you know, be coached by you, you know, outside of just the, the volleyball side of things. Um, have you had any other cool conversations with some of the girls 
you know, out off the court, just how cool it is uh, and how excited they are to to be coached by you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the girls are awesome. And I just, I, it's funny because some of my Italian teammates are their age. So I have experience of playing with girls that are, that are their age. And so I've had to learn throughout my career that I I've had to build relationships with, with yeah, girls their age. So I think I, I have a little bit better understanding on how to connect. I wouldn't say I'm great. Um, but I think just being able to yeah, start those conversations and and kind of create a, a pretty good relationship and know that I'm I'm here to help and I, I want the best for them and uh, I know what it's like to be in their shoes. So just uh, giving grace when it's needed, but also holding a standard as well. All right, we'll go with one more question from Lincoln. Uh, Jordan, did you have any other options on the table or is this, is this kind of, is going to be Nebraska or just kind of figure out your options later was Nebraska the one program you're focused on at this time for coaching opportunities yeah no I had I had a couple other uh people had reached out um but I think for me obviously I have a ton of support in Nebraska as well family friends all the things so um and it it was just kind of an obvious for me I'm gonna say obvious because I I really had a lot of great options but um this gives me the most um ability to kind of also be good for myself uh professionally one coaching, but then also playing. So this, I feel, I feel very lucky. And, and also too, like having, you know, like Jolene, I, I've known our trainer, I've known Jolene since I was in college and she knows me. And I think there's, there's something uh, said about that as well.